Hi everyone, and welcome to episode 33 of The Green Room. I am joined by James. James, how are you today? Very well, Nick. How are you getting on? I'm very well, very well. Good week. Uh, Still a few more days to go. Uh, Still in February, but soon in March. Yeah, it's going quickly already. It is, it is. Days are getting lighter. Uh, I mean, I have to say I'm enjoying the football a lot more than I did in January. Yeah, you're talking about our five side? Yes. Yeah, yeah, as am I. Uh, so it's, Although it is cold and raining. It's, it's the second thing I'm most looking forward to in the week. Obviously. Apart from spending time with me on this. Exactly. There we go. Excellent. Guessed it right. Guessed it right. So today we're going to talk a little bit about electric boilers. Um, and, you know, it's a topic that we wanted to obviously cover. We have had so many questions in, in, you know, the various, well, linked videos that we did. One on particularly where we talked about different forms of electric heating. We had a lot of comments saying, oh, you know, you didn't cover electric boilers. Yeah. So I thought today we would demystify them, talk about all aspects. And I, I think we got, uh, we had a whole load of questions, as you say, but I think we got a, a particular influx when the government announced that we were making the move from gas boilers to electric boilers. Mm. Their big, grand idea. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about what they are, how they work. Uh, and some of the benefits of them, because there definitely are benefits of them, uh, and some of the potential sort of negatives. Um, and then, uh, and then we'll see see how we get on. Okay, great. Um, so there is. I'm going to let you pronounce the uh, the name of the company because I always say it wrong. But before you pronounce the name of the company. James, <laughs> How can people watch us, listen to us, and find out about this podcast? Thank you for reminding me, Nicholas. So to listen uh, to this podcast, you can go on to any way you consume podcasts, because we're on Spotify, TuneIn Radio, uh, Apple Podcast, uh, what else is there? Stitcher, uh, Stitcher yeah. um, Podbean, loads of different things. Um, so please do subscribe, tell your friends, get them to subscribe. If you want to watch us, we put everything on to YouTube. Uh, I completely understand why you want to watch us. I got a particularly mean comment last time about Christmas, about, yeah. about how fat I looked after Christmas. Yes. Um, which so thank you, appreciate that. I think it was. Just, I'm still was slightly top. fat. I think it was. Harry, the top. don't laugh. We've got Harry sort of sat off camera here, just giggling. I at didn't that. see that comment. I, I think it was the pasty face for after. Christmas. I don't think it was the pasty face, unfortunately. No, I've yeah, had a haircut. I've had a haircut. Sometime, yeah. No, things are looking better. Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so, uh, yeah, basically, and so you can watch us on YouTube if you'd like to. Um, it's all there. And then, obviously, you can go back and find all the episodes we've done previously. Um, if you want to listen to... The some, there. Yeah, they're to awesome. watch. Mm-hmm. Doing all right, aren't they, yeah, now? Yeah. Doing all right. Um, so, anyway, right, we're going back on electric boilers. So, the basis of this is, um, traditionally, in homes in the UK, we are um, connected normally to a mass uh, mains gas supply. Uh, and so we burn gas basically in a boiler and it produces hot water for our heating system and for tap showers all that sort of thing so that's traditionally how we get hot water in our homes um electric boilers uh produce hot water obviously but they are using electricity to produce it right so that that's the fundamental difference we're no longer burning gas we are literally using electricity much like you'd boil a kettle, an element in the kettle gets the water nice and warm, yeah. or boiling. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's the basis of them. Mm-hmm. So why? Let's let's start with the why have why are we only look at these now, not as in episode thirty three, but like why why are they now coming to the fore? Well, you just you've answered partly the the question there. So it's it's uh, you know we the government have said, well look, you know we we want to move on to uh, non hydrocarbon type fuels you know whether that's transport whether that's heating whether it's industrial processes mm-hmm. and and obviously then you know if you then talk about electric which we talk quite a lot about we talked about this was heat pumps and that sort of stuff uh the electric boilers would come part of that conversation yeah so so that's why it's come to the fore but also you know we because we didn't mention it i think on, on a previous few podcasts uh viewers have asked us the question okay Okay, so um, so what what have we what types? Do you want, shall I run through a couple of main types, or do you want to? I, do you want to pronounce that company? You name? pronounce the name of the company. Heat Rate Sardia. So Heat Rate Sardia. So they are. Um, you may have heard of the word. Well, the term Megaflow, uh, which is basically it's an unvented hot water tank. So it's a pressurized hot water tank. 
Um, so uh, if people have sort of larger homes, they tend to put these things in because it pings hot water to all of your uh, taps and, and showers and baths at really, well, your mains pressure, essentially. So whatever pressure is coming into the house, it gets sent round the house at that mains pressure. So it means if you've got people having multiple showers at the same time, i.e. like three showers in a home being used, they all have an element of, of pressure. Yeah, so I think mm -hmm. we've all been there where you've turned the shower on and it sort of just dribbles onto your head, yeah. right? So that, that kind of gets away from that. So anyway, one of the most well-known brands is the Megaflow and the company that make the Megaflow... Hero Sardio. They... <laughs> <laughs> or Sadio. They, Sardio. they have started... Well, they're not really started, but, uh, but I've certainly now started seeing them in, in properties a bit more. The uh, Their two kind of main models of electric boiler oh, what's the other one electro lux is that different than so or? well so electro lux is sorry electro max sorry i've seen that sorry electro max i've seen in a epc survey a few months ago actually okay so so let's do do the amp tech first because that's a kind of one that is is the most basic and then that is included in electro max so so basically uh, and i went into a survey yeah a few months ago i wonder what the hell this thing was but it's it's basically... So you saw an Amtec. So I saw an Amtec, and it's uh, it's a metre long, and it's nine centimetres sort of deep and nine centimetres wide. Uh, so it's basically just this big bar, mm -hmm. right? And it has a um, pipe going in the top, pipe going in the bottom. And basically what it is doing is creating hot water for a wet um, hot water system. Yeah, for a hot water, sorry, for a, a wet radiator system. So it is producing the hot water that feeds directly into your radiators and your heating system. It can be used with a any sort of atypical wet heating system. So basically cold water comes in from one pipe, goes through the heat exchanger, yep. comes out hot on the other side, yep. it gets pumped into your central heating system, the heterocyte system warms up and it's like your classical central heating system but the only thing is you're using uh, electricity instead of exactly gas. exactly that so and that comes in lots of different sizes so and again we're going to look at this in a little bit more detail but it comes from a, a sort of a four kilowatt system up up all the way to a 12 kilowatt system in truth the size of the unit despite the fact that it does a lot more the 12 kilowatt system does a lot more than the four kilowatt system the size of the actual bit that goes in your home is no no size and difference um the the kind of, it's slightly heavier as you go for the for the bigger the higher rated yeah. systems but they are exactly the same size and so uh one of the advantages of these systems obviously it doesn't do any of your showers or anything like that but it means that if you move away from gas you put one of these into your you know airing cupboard for example you can do away with a flu yeah yeah, so... So that's an advantage. That's a big advantage. Um, there's no real moving parts. Yeah, electricity, uh, servicing. Exactly. So so if you've kind of, if you're a landlord and, uh, you know, you, it means you don't have to get the annual safety certificate, your gas safety certificate, that kind of thing. So th there are savings associated with it. It's very, very simple, um, but actually quite elegant. And the fact it's so small yeah. means it's quite a neat solution. Um, but then we're going to go on to the Electromax that you've seen in a property. Mm -hmm. And this is also made by Hero Sardia. Yeah. There yeah. we go. Um, tell me a bit about the Electromax. So it's uh, quite cumbersome, to be honest. So, mm -hmm. so, so it came with a 180 litre tank. So, so unlike um, the Am Am oh, sorry, Am Amtec system, it, it, um, it also, so while, while it... Uh, passes the heating through the main heating system with under pressure it also stores the hot water in its in the cylinder, cylinder which yeah. basically sits underneath the unit and then it basically just pings that out to all the different hot water taps you've got in, in your in your property at main pressure correct so it's almost i mean it is essentially a uh, electric unvented heating system correct yeah so quite nice i mean it's mm. the uh obviously the size is a big thing they're big yeah. units and you saw how big was the tank was 180 liters and they go bigger massive. than that don't they yeah so well, i think that might well be the i'm not sure i think it might well be the biggest size we'll have to just look at that but um okay i think the, they scaled down to 140 but 
So, so basically, what it is, is it's the AmpTech, which is this kind of long unit that I was yeah. talking about, producing hot water for, sorry, producing the hot water for your heating system, but also it has another separate tank, it stores hot water at mains pressure for all of the faucets in your house. So bars, showers, taps, and so it can ping it. So it's quite a clever piece of kit. And when I asked the tenant, I was like, oh, you know, oh, I said, well, where's your um, hot water system? And they said, oh, there it is. And I was like, oh, but what... Because I was, you don't just see these things on a normal sort of survey basis. You tend to kind of come across storage heaters, air sort of heat pumps, mm-hmm. or gas boilers. Yeah, it was just a little bit unusual. But then, you know, when I saw the dial, and oh, I was like, oh, you know, it's, a, it's an electric electric boiler. Yeah, so it's quite. Interesting. And and I think we're gonna we're gonna see more and more into the system. In in terms of price for the basic one, I was talking for the Amtec, a six kilowatt system was about five hundred and fifty quid. And that's on screw fix. So these things are very readily available now. Mm-hmm. Um, the bigger, the Electromax, uh, you're looking more like £2,000. So there's a big old difference. And also, as you, I guess you can appreciate, the with the Electromax, you've got a huge amount more in terms of plumbing. Yeah. Yeah, because we've got to send water to taps and showers and bars and all that sort of stuff. Whereas the Amtec, you're literally just connecting it to your hot water, sorry, your heating system. Um, so that's worth that's worth mentioning. Um, the so I guess so does Amtec Hamt- work work with a with a separate un- unvented uh, hot water tank? So you t- yeah exactly. So you so you would see it. So you'd have that, and then for your hot water for your showers and everything, and immersion, and you'd have that. You, you'd have a hot water tank, yeah. and if it was pressurized, it'd be pressurized. If it wasn't, it wasn't. But you'd have to have that separate tank. So this is kind of a neater solution if you want to get it all into an airing cupboard. Yeah. But if you've already got, for example, in your property, you've already got two separate systems. Yeah. So I have at the moment, I mean, God knows, but I'm going to have hot water in my radiators yeah. from a source. Yeah. And then I've obviously got my hot water separately for my showers mm-hmm. and stuff. Then the Amtec allows you just to replace one of those elements. Mm-hmm. you see what I mean because yeah. I can just replace that which is probably a bit cheaper mm-hmm. um, but the the I guess the nicer solution is the Electromax because it's all in one place. the the Electromax does max out at uh, 9 kilowatts yeah whereas with the Amtec so the smaller unit you can get 12 kilowatts mm-hmm. which is pretty heavy duty so that I mean a 12 kilowatt will do a reasonable size house yeah. um, so that's the thing and then the we're going to go and talk about costs and, and price for electricity and stuff in a set. But I think the when when we were doing a bit of research before this, the the thing that became very apparent is apart from heat heat ray sadia, mm-hmm. none of the other kind of manufacturers have really jumped on it. There's a few manufacturers of electric boilers. Yeah. Um, Feroli do one. Okay. And that looks a lot more like a, a kind of combi boiler, mm-hmm. and it works just like a combi boiler as well. Um, but obviously it's running on specifically electricity. Mm-hmm. Um, it's about the same price as a combi boiler. You know, it's not it's not that much cheaper. Um, the the again, that's kind of the only other brand that I've heard of. Yeah, I, mean, I think a lot of the others has electric boiler company. And I haven't seen it's, what you've said. I haven't seen a Worcester Bosch or a Valiant, which are gas manufacturing. Sorry, gas boiler manufacturers, or you know, of other kind of heating type systems yeah I, I haven't but across. but presumably with the government's announcement that we're all going to move to electric boiler systems they are going to very soon start bringing models out because otherwise they're going to suddenly lose their whole market yeah and but as we'll come to in a second uh, it's going to have to come up with it's going to have to be in line with some some form of building regs update because at the minute if you are doing EPCs on them uh, they don't really give so you so EPC is energy performance certificate yeah if people are not familiar go on so do you want to talk about EPCs now yeah just drop it let's yeah, talk about EPCs them. so if, if you're doing an energy performance certificate so where properties are being exchanged on the market so whether you're selling it or you're a landlord you're wanting to, to lease that out or uh, you're doing something say for solar panels etc then you would have seen a certificate produced for your property, which will give the property a value, A being the best and G being the worst. 
Uh, and now if you are uh, doing the minimum energy efficiency standards, so that is if you're letting it in the private sector, the property has to have a minimum E rating. Mm -hmm. So you've got to be a little bit careful then if you are a landlord and you've got a decent sized property and say, you know, insulation is not in all the right places for, you know, various reasons because yeah. there's a period pro property, etc. Because the electric boiler, it doesn't actually count as much in that RD SAP assessment for the EPC. It will suppress that value. So you've got to be very careful whether you hit uh, a band E um, or not. So if you are then looking for electric, it might well be air source heat pumps, you know, if it's a fairly well insulated house or if it's a, a storage heater. Yeah. Uh, type, type unit. So yeah, you've just got to be very, very careful. Uh, and you know if if the government are wanting to kind of push this that's the flip side of it they've got to then update how they look at and I, but i think they will i mean listen we we've worked in this industry for almost a decade mm -hmm. and you know infrared for example is something that we've always been pretty strong advocates for and that you know if you install it and it goes onto an epc because it's not on the approved supplier list it doesn't really help an EPC rating, no. despite the fact that is a lot better than a, you know, fan heater. a fan heater. Um, so I think these changes are going to come. But I guess, as you say, you, you're completely right. For the landlords, the trick is to get something that is going to last a long time, mm -hmm. but to get it at the time when it can be used. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? Because if it, so, if they don't update the EPC calculation methodology, yeah. What they need to do as a landlord, you need to get a really efficient gas boiler now mm -hmm. with a like seven year warranty, yes, which is going to probably get well should get you through to twenty twenty seven, yeah. At that stage, I assume will be when this electric boiler mm -hmm. stuff comes in, and then you can then move to the electric boiler. So if you if you had gas in your house now, mm -hmm. I'd very much strongly recommend staying with a gas boiler. Yeah, was that fair? Yes. Um, I was just going to say now the conversation neatly leads into talking about running costs because, okay, so say, for instance, you are there in terms of, you know, it's now now approved on the supply list, mm -hmm. that, you know, the landlord can install it, blah, 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 the EPC rating is fine. Uh, don't forget, they're not going to stay at a minimum ban rating of E. That's going to go up to a D, yeah. potentially to a C. Yeah. So, um, you know, as you said, it'll have to be updated, but then you have to then look at the running costs because it's not just no, agreed. sort of installing it, giving the keys to the tenant, but then it's really expensive to run. Agreed. So, so efficiency. So let's start with efficiency, mm -hmm. right? So the electric boilers are running at 99.9, 99.8% efficient. Some are saying 100%. So one unit of input electricity equals one output of heat. useful heat yeah whereas a gas boiler we're looking now about 92 93 percent um again it depends if the gas boiler is up to temperature and all that sort of stuff yeah and the uh, heat exchanger in the flue and things is actually working so on average sort of mid 80s yeah yeah mid 80s i'd say um but it can drop right it can in different conditions but but anyway we're looking reasonably high how much is a unit of electricity pop quiz Cost. Yeah. Oh, so I've just renewed at 15 pence per kilowatt hour. Yeah. And how much is the price of gas? So I've just renewed at 2.9 pence per kilowatt hour. Okay, so we've got 15p for electricity and 3p for gas. So we've got electricity, 100% efficient. Mm -hmm. So each unit, you know, one, one unit. Gas is basically five times cheaper. Yes. Yeah. And it's... 85% efficient. Mm -hmm. So it's going to work out probably four times cheaper. Correct. Yeah. By the time per unit of useful per heat. unit of useful heat produced. Mm -hmm. So a gas boiler is four times cheaper per unit of useful heat produced. So I think number one, that's quite telling. Uh, I think that is that's the fundamental, and that's why I'm so confused by the government's announcement. Mm. Um, I think, you know, if, if you just think about it, so I have gas coming into my house through the mains gas network, which has cost billions, of obviously not today's prices, probably, you know, billions of pounds to put in place. I have gas coming in, I burn it in my boiler to produce hot water. If I have an electric boiler, I have gas going into a power station, burning it. Mm -hmm. I then... Interesting. 
get the transmission losses of getting the electricity from that power station to my house and that's then 100% efficient at my house. Mm, but not 100% or n- nowhere near that from extraction to transport. So don't forget, you've got that as well. Yeah. So you've got the cost of... Because we, we're, we're not a net exporter of gas anymore. We're a net importer now. Yeah. So it's coming via LNG terminals or it's coming via the Siberian pipeline or whatever it's called, the Nordic pipeline from Russia, places like um, Norway. And it's got to get to... Places where you store it in the UK, then it's got to go from the places that you store it to the um, power stations that make the electricity. So then, as you've said, into the grid via the transmission network, losses, but then also carbon footprint. Yeah, and and the way. So I, so I, this is why I'm so perplexed by it. I don't understand from a pricing point of view. It makes absolutely no sense at all. Unless the government is going to suddenly put an enormous levy on household gas over the price of gas that a power plant is bringing in. I mean, I know they obviously put tax and thing on that already, but it still doesn't make any sense. It's confusing, to me. yeah. And, and certainly, I mean, I know renewables are, are punching above their weight, I'd say, because, mm-hmm. you know, from a coal perspective, we're down to, to something like 3% of uh, electricity generation from coal way down for say 13 14 years i think we were going over the stats it was around well certainly more than a third Mm -hmm. it was about 40 percent so we've decarbonized from coal replaced it with gas and renewables are punching above their weight but the there's an issue of um, storage there and intermittency intermittency i'd say is the big one Mm. you know because if at, I always do half time coronation street but i think it's the fair you know the best one to do half time coronation street Sun ain't shining in the winter. Um, if the wind isn't blowing, yeah, we we don't have renewables. No. Um, I mean, some people put nuclear in the renewables category. Mm, fine. I do. Fine. Um, <laughs> but we, but, you know, we we just don't have that power. So that means you always need either storage for when it the wind is blowing, the sun is shining, or you need the exact equivalent in you know your main power generation which is gas, which can be turned on pretty quickly, a gas power plant. Nuclear, base load, it's always on. Mm-hmm. But you, you need that to match your total installed um, renewables, which we're, we're definitely pushing this movement to renewables. And I think it's actually, I think it's really good. Uh, and there are lots of predictable renewables like Tidal. Well, not lots of, but Tidal is predictable. Um, but I think the other ones are just, it makes me a bit nervous, basically. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so, so the price, it doesn't make any sense. We're not accelerating title. I mean, although there's been initiatives, I think we'll talk about that in a second. Um, sorry, at the end when we talk about the news. Um, I mean that that is the obvious one, but I think it's you know we've got to start from somewhere, and it's just a massive kind of say R and D cost to get it to a point where. Yeah, I mean the thing we're man, nailing is offshore wind. Yes. In terms of cost coming down, yes. the size of these things because they're enormous. Yes. Yeah, and so and every isn't it a, sort of by a factor of nine, every little bit bigger, every I don't know, meter you add or something increases the power by a power of nine, something like that. So every time you fly over from continental Europe and you fly over the channel, you can see wind farms and they're massive. Yeah. 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 Um. So so I think that side of it is really good, uh, but. But this move worries me, basically. However, mm-hmm. if you have no access to gas, I think they're a really, really neat solution. Having seen one in a one-bed flat, they're brilliant. Because this little Amtec thing, which, as I say, is a metre long by nine centimetres by nine centimetres, was on the wall, in the air and covered, and did all of their wet so, heating So system. if you can deal with the running costs, actually... It's, it's quite normal. But if you only have electricity, you're used to the running cost of electricity anyway. Well, yeah. you might want to go storage heaters. You may want to go storage heaters. True. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's some... Is it wrong to say there's something quite nice about the, the comfort of a wet central heating system? Do you know what I mean? Like, you can go, you turn your radiators up. It's more usual, isn't it? It's just what you come across. I think that's what people are used to. It's more usual, yeah. Rather than each heater being used individually. Yeah. Uh, 
I don't know. I mean, you get, uh, I think, you know, some of the Dimplex stuff out there, the um, high high retention. Yeah, no, Quantum. Yeah, yeah, they're not, not too, quite slick, slick looking these days. I yeah. think people sort of got those 70s, 80s. Yeah. Massive storage seaters in their yeah, minds. Yeah, which look rubbish. Yeah. I mean. But anyway, I mean, on the, on the running cost itself, so if we just do the simple maths there, so if we're saying 15p per kilowatt hour. Yeah. Of of use, so so on an hourly basis, a twelve kilowatt system, we're looking at between a pound fifty and two pounds yeah. per hour of use, mm-hmm. and what you're using it eight hours a day. But but you wouldn't use it every hour. You wouldn't use it every hour of every day. So for half of that, four hours. Yeah, a day. might be using it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But obviously, there's thermostats in it. It's probably not going to be running all the time. But okay, if you if you just said it was running the same amount as a gas system mm-hmm. yeah and so you're going as you said pound 52 pounds which sort yeah. of with? well look at it so my house on average what spend say a thousand pounds on gas yeah but then if you're saying saying to me it's four times more expensive we'd, we'd have to for that useful heat we'd have to spend four thousand pounds. pounds yeah that is astronomical yeah yeah so, um yeah but about how how is the government going to make the numbers work what are they going to do? They're going to drive the price of gas up. That, or, or you know, what we're talking about the the real real time pricing of electricity, potentially, potentially, if if um, you know, if it's a particularly windy day, maybe the, you know, they'll say, to, right, you know, we've got now an excess of electricity being produced. It's really cheap. So, so maybe that fifteen p won't be fifteen p. It might be ten p. But do do you not think or twelve p. And and the government, you know, they useless as we all know but do you not think uh they're in a a tricky position because on rental accommodation you can obviously force people to do electric heating systems yeah because you can literally say if it doesn't have an electrical heating system you can't rent it yeah in in my house i can just say no i'm not going to change and then i have my gas central heating system yeah Mm -hmm. and uh they can't, it's, it's like I'm relatively young and hopefully relatively fit, but if you took, so some sort of 75 year old, mm-hmm. yeah, has a gas central heating system, that's all they've ever known, that's all they want. The government can't turn off the gas network mm-hmm. because you're going to suddenly kill all these people because they're not going to have any heating in the winter. Yeah. They could never do that. And don't forget, you know, we, we see some people attached to their kingfishers and their Mexico two boilers. Yeah, you know? and these are like 35 year old boilers. Yeah. So despite the fact the government are really trying to make this push, they can't enforce it, mm-hmm. I don't think. So they're going to have to rethink that strategy. I think uh, s- since the, well, certainly during the election campaign and after it, there's been a lot more soundings about energy efficiency again. So I don't know. It was very confusing. As you said, it was very, very confusing in the autumn of last year where they said that he- the heating... Um, and uh, heating systems is that is an area that they were going to tackle. Yeah. Uh, whereas I think the elephant in the room is energy efficiency. Mm-hmm. There's so much we can do on that side in terms of not just the homes that we live in, but um, factories um, making transportation fish, uh, system, systems more more efficient, running on on the same fuels. Uh, and you know, it might not just be on, on this side, but it might be. You know, when we get to these targets where we want to kick out the uh, diesel and petrol cars, mm-hmm. I don't know because again, it might be very expensive to run them on electricity. And as you've said, so I'll, you know, I will charge my electric car, but then bring in gas to create that electricity. So it's very, very yeah, easy. peculiar one. But uh, so with, there are clear advantages, mm-hmm. and if you've if you've only got access to electricity all in. Um, the price of it, if your tenants are paying, then you're not so worried. You're, you're less worried, which sounds yeah. horrendous, yeah. but it's there's less fuss with them. Mm-hmm. They're cleaner. They take up more space. You don't need flues, all of that sort of stuff. Um, we we've talked about the fact there's lack of brands in there, but yeah. they're obviously going to come to market. Um, but also the effect on the EPC rating as is. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, the government are going to have to change that. Disadvantages. So cost being being a, an obvious I think one. that's the main one. 
I think that's a, and also the the reliability of them because none of the main guys have come in to the market it's choice. But it, but actually reliability, mm-hmm. you know, they've they don't have any moving parts. You're not burning anything inside them. Mm-hmm. Kettles go on for ages. You know, it's difficult to break a kettle. Yes. So unless you live in a heavy watered area. Hmm. So, <laughs> so no, but that's what I mean. So so, so they should really them. they should really be all right. I mean, power cuts. You're screwed if you have a power cut with a gas boiler or an electric boiler because mm. you need gas in gas boiler to get the thing on. Yeah. And here we go. We'll probably have a question about this, and I can just anticipate this already. So someone's going to write in and say, "Oh, James, Nick, you haven't thought of one thing. What if you know I could have a solar system to so, generate the electricity to power my electric boiler? How do we answer that?" So that's all good. You use it. I mean, you some of the electric boiler systems out there allow you to link in solar thermal, mm-hmm. so you can add solar thermal to the store. Um, but uh, to put electricity from your solar panels in, you might make up five percent. Yeah, if if that in in the UK, I mean, maybe if you're in California or South Spain. Yeah, I mean, looking out the weather at the moment. Yeah, I'm not overly excited about solar PV right now, to be honest. Let's give it a couple of months, mm. see if we ever see the sun again. Yes. Um, so I think that's it for electric boilers. Yeah. Because I'm aware we're marginally pressed for time. So I think the, the news thing that we were going to talk about today... Oh, it was massive today, yeah. Um, come on, tell, tell everyone. Heathrow. So there was... Uh, so Heathrow Terminal 3, I mean, it's been dragging on. Runway 3. Sorry. Uh, They've already got Terminal 3. Of course they do, yeah. Uh, mm. And it's been revamped and it looks quite nice. <laughs> uh, so Runway 3 uh, was the... Well, the infrastructure project. It's been... I mean, I remember it. Even in, in the 90s, there was talks about it, you know, where they you know, build the extra runway, the Gatwick. And, and Boris didn't even have to lie on the runway. He didn't have to it, lie on the it runway. It was no, the courts. He, did, he didn't have to lie in the, or in the ditches or what was it, with, with the diggers or, stop, or chain himself to the diggers or any of that stuff. It was the courts. It yeah. was the courts that, that um, have put a massive, um, how do we say, uh, spanner in the works. Mm-hmm. And I think the government might just sort of use that as an excuse uh, to not make a controversial decision. I, th- I think it's easier now, especially with seemingly in the last year, there has been a step change in people's uh, awareness, I guess, of energy efficiency and trying to save the planet and lower emissions and all that sort of thing. So I think putting a big new runway at mm. throw but it's isn't really going to help but the message. Also, but don't forget, so two weeks ago, they had to face up to a very controversial decision in terms of what they did with HS2. So they probably think, thought, is, you know, Stupid we'll HS2. side with HS2 because it's, well, it's really expensive, but it's sort of an easier sell than, you know, an extra runway Heathrow. Ridiculous. What they need to do is put a big airport. If they're worried about connecting north and south, put a big airport in the north, like a massive airport, like Heathrow size. That would do it. Anyway. Or just build an extra runway Luton or Stansted. Or they could do that. Yeah. Um, so that was the big news today. But so actually, that's great. You know, and we live in London, having loads of planes fly over. I think having yeah pollution that amount, that but slightly less is, is good. Yeah. Uh, but did you know that since two thousand three? Global air travel has increased tenfold. No. Yes. Really? Yes. Is that because of the little no frills airlines? That you yeah. Can poss- fly to Alicante for eight pounds. Possibly, but also um, I think since two thousand, the I think the global po- poverty rate has, has halved. Hmm. So I think there's more people have got you know disposable income. People want to try. Sorry, people want to. <laughs> try to fly and, you know, fly to um, other destinations and stuff. And I guess the world is just more connected. But I was staggered. Hmm. It's just because of this coronavirus thing. They were saying, yeah, I mean, in 20 years ago, it would be a lot harder to spread. But now, you know, there's... Globalisation. Yeah. There we go. So that's the big news. So that's, I think that's... Should we... Was there anything on Tidal? Was um, there anything on Tidal I think, Energy? No? I, think, I think we've got to yeah. have to wrap up because of time. Cool. Um, so listen thank you for listening or watching uh, and um, we will see you next time bye now